Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Monday morning here in Australia, and we've had a little bit of a bounce. So, market now $2.57 trillion, so up nearly 2%, which is nice. And as we can see, it's a bit of green here, definitely happening on the Bitcoin chart and the Ethereum chart, which is really, really nice. But there's still some red as well, so it's a mixed bag. I mean, Luna doing extremely well, bounced 15%, so very, very nice. So, look, is this you know is the bottom end that's what we're really waiting to see was that it got down to 53 i think it might have even wicked down into the 52 range and look i did suspect that that's where it was going to hit so now we're just going to have to wait and see whether that is you know that was the bottom we're waiting for the markets to open up i think it's still a public holiday over in the states so we might have to wait till tuesday i know they got the you know thanksgiving has already uh been but i think maybe it's a long weekend again we'll have to wait and see you know cyber monday deals and all that kind of stuff still going on so if you're doing shopping at the moment there's some pretty good deals out there i've done a little bit of shopping myself and look we even have the black friday cyber monday sort of weekend sales here in australia and i really like it you know anytime you can get things somewhat at a discount is pretty good but you know where you get a discount in one area they'll get you in another though so just remember that all right bitcoin dominance has risen a little bit but still under 41 percent so overall bitcoin dominance uh, is dropping there's definitely some volume in here so people have been buying the dip jumping all over it hence why prices have moved up a little bit and it's easy to move the price on a weekend when no one's trading so that's why you generally sort of see that bitcoin price as we can see almost getting up to fifty six thousand dollars there looking nice and gas prices have just exploded again everyone's you know buying the dip and you know moving coins around in and out of stable coins depending uh yeah I'm hoping the bottom is in, in all fairness. But let's have a look. What's done the best in the last 24 hours? Considering we're up you know, nearly 2%, there should be some good movers. So Luna leading the way. There you go. Rose doing nice. Safe Moon, good lord. Sandbox has making another move again, which is good. Uh, Compound, look out. A little bit of DeFi happening there. We don't see much from DeFi generally. Uh, Celsius up there, nice. Look. Two really nice gains, a couple of okay gains, and then, you know, we're just into the low single-digit gains. But look, any gain's a good gain. We'll take it. It's better than a loss. Now, speaking of losses, where are we at? All right, so basic attention token down, live peer down, Sire coin, immutable X is down, uh, Zcash, they had a really good pump on the news that they're moving to proof of stake from proof of work. Crypto.com, again, that was firing for a while and now starting to cool off. So this is what happens. Things pump up a whole lot and then they quieten down. Uh, it's all just part of the natural kind of cycle of things. Look, but no really bad losses. I mean, a couple of single, di uh, some low single digit losses, but then, yeah, not too bad at all considering, you know, where we've sort of been over the last probably a week or so. All right, let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So this is where we're at. Again, we've sold off and have a look. Again, we find the bottom. And like I said, I think it got down to about 50. Well, there was 53. What's that wick? Oh, no, not quite 52,000, but 53,000. And I did suspect that we'd find some sort, sort of support in and around about here, you know. I thought it might come down a little bit lower, sort of get down to here. Fifth, again, high 52s, 53s, pretty close thereabouts. And have we now found that bottom and are we going to start moving up? The last two days are looking good. This uh, day is still kind of ready to play out and we've got to wait and see what happens uh, stateside time because that's really, uh, you know, the biggest indicator is when the markets open up over there. But a bit of a bounce, but could it be this before we roll over and then do something like this? That's what we're all waiting to see. Now, as I spoke, you know, a lot of people get worried when Bitcoin's going down and then people also say, oh, but it's the market that's not too correlated. Look, the correlation is still there. All markets are correlated. Now, if the S&P 500 is doing bad, which is the biggest market in the world, you can guarantee that other markets are going to suffer. That's just the way it is. It's just the level that they suffer. Will they suffer more or less? Because sometimes people will, you know, sort of move to other markets to try and get some gains. But a lot of the time, they simply sell from the other markets to make up the losses from the S&P 500. So, I mean, we have a look here. Boom, big sell-off. And what have we seen in cryptocurrencies? 
boom, a big, not a big sell-off, but anyway, a sell-off. Nonetheless, S&P, we had the sell-off. We're really waiting to kind of see whether it's going to bottom out here or are we maybe going to come down lower because there's reports that, you know, this new variant of the virus is worse, but then there's also been reports coming out saying that it's actually not worse. So was this a bit of hype to, you know, kind of scare the market? Because the latest report I heard is that uh, the symptoms are actually less. They're not as bad. So... Again, and that's from the, that was on the news this morning, the doctor that originally found it over in South Africa. She was the one to first kind of discover it. And so the symptoms are less, is what she is saying. It's really just uh, not so much fever, feeling a bit fatigued uh, and a bit of a headache. They were the main symptoms. So, you know, a lot of hype went behind it. It was going to be worse and it's, you know, a worse variant and it's a worse mutation of it. uh, And, you know, it's going to be, vaccine resistant and all the rest of it well even if it is vaccine resistant at the moment it seems as though the variant itself is not as bad as some of the ones we've had but you know that kind of information changes on a daily basis you know we'll watch the news or read the news tomorrow and it'll turn out that no it actually is 10 times worse that's you know the way the news goes it's hard to know what's the truth but anyway again this is the sell-off we've seen so in the S&P 500 you can go and have a look at the gold charts. I mean, look, gold's even down. So you you know, you know, go out there and you try and find the safe market. There is no safe market at the moment, except for maybe property. But even property would likely uh, see a downturn if things really start to get hit. Property is a fairly stable market on the way up. But when things really go bad in markets, property still suffers. It just doesn't suffer as quickly. It takes a little while for markets to turn bad before the property market turns bad. Now, again, you can go over to the Dow in uh, Industrial Jones. And I mean, look at this boom. It's come all the way down. And I did watch a video of Alessio Rastani uh, thing in a video this morning on YouTube. And he was saying this is really the key level to watch on the industrial Dow Jones, on the Dow Jones Industrial, sorry, that if it goes below sort of 3,400 here and 15, so about $5 lower than this, then it's a good chance we are going to go into a multi-month, maybe multi-year bear market. But we're still a ways from there at the moment. So we'll have to keep an eye on this and see if that's actually going to play out. Now, one quick story I wanted to bring you because there's not a whole lot going on at the moment, Cyber Monday. All right, Ethereum devs are assessing at reducing data transfer costs to 5x. So it is EIP 4488, uh, and it might become a possible solution. But what I found interesting is that they were talking about the prices of L1 and L2. So at the time of writing, L2 solutions are much cheaper than L1 fees. And the cost to send Ethereum via Loopring can cost up to 25 cents. So 25 cents is still too much, you know, when we talk about the grand scheme of things, but it is quite cheap. Polygon, uh, currently 25 cents. ZK Sync is around 27 cents but here was interesting optimism costs two dollars 39 today and transferring with arbitrum one is two dollars and 43 cents so it seems some of these l2s still aren't anywhere near as cheap as what we thought i mean look you know 25 cents for a transaction is not too bad unless you're kind of sending only you know maybe four or five dollars then 25 dollars is way uh, sorry 25 cents is way too much we really need to get them down to a couple of cents and this is my greatest fear for ethereum is this eth 2.0 you know there's all this hype behind it and it sounds great but it's just taking too long and you know these other chains continue to build and build and build and you know even with the l2s i mean we go back down here you know 25 cents considering you know you can get i think solana does it for about one cent or something like that or two cents don't uh, quote me on that it's just something i heard i think it was quite cheap on solana And so even these L2s are still, you know, the fees are quite steep, particularly, you know, when we're talking about optimism for $2.39 and Arbitrum 1 for $2.40. That's way too much. Again, imagine you're only trying to send $3 and you're losing basically all of it in a transaction. And that's what, you know, worldwide adoption will basically require is super cheap transactions, basically, you know, a cent or less Otherwise, uh, it's just not going to work. So, look, that's all that's going on. And I just, again, wanted to focus on, yes, Bitcoin's been going down for a while, but all the other markets have. 
and we're just waiting to see was that the bottom again did we get down to that $53,000 mark and are we going to start to recover from here well again we can see that there is definitely some you know gainers over there and the market is up overall there you go we've finally moved up to two percent so hopefully that was the bottom and it's up from here a lot of people are saying that they kind of expect bitcoin to go up what was it alex mashinsky from celsius very smart guy he's expecting a bounce up to uh, seventy thousand in december that would be quite nice that is you know that's a new all-time high uh and quite a move again from the fifty four thousand dollars that bitcoin is at right now well 56 there we go we've broke fifty six thousand. that's nice we got sorry broke the fifty five thousand. got into the fifty six thousand. if we made a very quick move up to seventy thousand, maybe over the next sort of i think yeah 30 days of september april june and november uh there you go so we got one more day you know what would be really funny is if by tomorrow afternoon bitcoin got to ninety eight thousand dollars and plan b's prediction was right now i'm not saying that's going to happen but imagine if it did because oh he has copped some stick you know like he's been off but imagine again maybe not even you know ninety eight thousand. maybe you know we just get up to sort of 88 sort of you know around 90,000 and then the 98,000 for bitcoin comes you know on like december 3rd december 4th then i think he would still be proven right again everyone was giving him so much stick and november's not even over yet over yet sorry but i do think we uh make some nice moves upwards here but the volatility is going to be wild if we truly are going into this final stage and we're going to have to blow off top and particularly if it's coming in you know kind of december january like a lot of people think it will the four-year cycle is going to play out is what they're saying then things are going to get really crazy from here i'm not sold on that i think we're going to go to the extended market i'm down with that theory that's where my head's at i think it comes you know somewhere between sort of march march to sort of june is really where i think it's most likely going to come you know give or take a little bit could come a month earlier could come a month later but also i i really like data dash's theory that maybe it pushes out to even november next year but we'll have to wait and see all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another we should all be on that gain train at least you know <laughs> in the short term uh a little bit of gain train some people may still be down if you're unfortunate enough to you know buy you know four weeks ago then uh outside of metaverse anyway they've still been doing really well but that's it from me and i'll see you next time